Lesson 3.4 is uh, about marginal analysis, which is one of the first uh, applications of our derivatives that we're going to study. And we'll divide this uh, lecture into uh, several videos. Uh, in this first one, we're going to talk about costs. So let's clarify what this marginal analysis means. Uh, marginal analysis is the study of the rate of change of economic quantities. And examples of those quantities are given below. The economic quantities that we're going to be focusing on are cost, revenue, and profit. So let's get right into an example. Let the production costs for producing X widgets be given by the cost function. C of X equals 500 plus 350X minus 0.09X squared. And let me just be sure you know what it is that we're looking at here before we talk about what we're going to uh, be asking to calculate. Uh, we work at a company. They make widgets. Tape recorders, watches, iPads, whatever you want to be making. Um, and X is the number of those widgets that we're kicking out of our factory. And prior to us getting into this analysis, somebody has figured out that this math expression will tell us the cost at a particular production level. And so what we're asking for in letter A is to figure out the cost to produce 200 widgets. And that would be if you plug in 200 into this function. We're also going to investigate uh, and, and write down what is the cost to produce the 201st widget. And then finally, uh, we're going to look at the rate of change uh, at x equals 200. Well, getting the answer to part A is pretty straightforward. We're simply going to plug 200 into this function. We're going to compute C of 200, meaning we're going to put 200 where x is. And you can verify my calculations, but I've cranked this one out already. And it is uh, $66,900. Now, figuring out the price, or the, excuse me, the cost for the 201st widget is slightly more complicated. Since this function tells us the cost of producing X widgets, we simply can't plug in 201 and figure out how much the 201st one costs. Because when you plug in 201, that tells you the cost to produce all 201 items. The way we figure out the 201st item is we take that cost and subtract off the cost for the first 200. And as you know, we already calculated C of 200. Um, and of course, in my notes, I've calculated C of 201. The cost for 201 widgets is $67,213.91 minus our previous calculation of 66900 gives us the cost for the 201st widget which comes in at $313.91 again you can verify my values but I'm pretty sure I'm right The last thing we're asked to do is to look at the rate of change for this function at a production level of 200, in other words, at x equals 200. And as you know by now, when we investigate rates of change in calculus, we use derivatives. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what c prime of x is, and then I will plug in 200. Looking up at our function above, the derivative of 500 is 0 because it's a constant. Uh, the derivative of 350x is just 350. And the derivative of negative 0.09x squared is uh, 0.18x. When we plug a 200 in for x, this works out to be 314. Now the units on this are dollars per widget. And so what we've just calculated is that the rate of change at a production level of 200 is $314 per widget. And what's interesting is, look at these two values here, 313.91 and 314. 
it appears that uh, the rate of change at 200, at a, at a production level of 200 widgets, is very close to the cost for the 201st widget. So let's just articulate that again. We've noticed um, that the cost for the 201st widget at $313.91 is very close to the rate of change at a production level of 200 widgets, which was $314. It turns out that we're on to something. The rate of change of the cost function at a point can be used to approximate the cost to produce an additional widget. And this just is, isn't just an accident. Uh, this concept has a formal vocabulary, which we're going to discuss next. So let me introduce you to marginal cost. The actual cost incurred in producing an additional unit is called the marginal cost. For us, that was the value for $313.91. We calculated it for the 201st widget. The derivative of the cost function, C prime of x, is called the marginal cost function. And this derivative, C prime of x, approximates the marginal cost, which is exactly what we noticed when we figured out the rate of change to be $314 at a production level of 200. So let's look at another example. Here uh, we show you the production, production costs for the Wolverine Widgets uh, company. And that production cost is given by uh, C of x equals 2500 minus 10x minus 0.1x squared plus 0.0002x cubed. It's quite a function. We are asked to find the marginal cost function. We know that means find the derivative and then approximate the marginal cost when producing x equals 200, 300, and 400 widgets. In other words, we're going to plug these numbers into the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. In part A, they asked for the marginal cost function, which is the derivative of c of x. So I'm going to do c prime of x, and then compute the derivative function here. 2,500 is a 0. Uh, the next term is negative 10. The next term is negative 0.02x. Be careful with your zeros. There's quite a few of them in this problem. This last term is 0.0006x squared. This is our marginal cost function. And what we're supposed to do is plug in 200, 300, and 400. So first, let's go ahead. First, let's go ahead and plug in 200 into this function. Now I'm going to spare you all the writing, but I did plug this value in, and I came up with a value of 10. That's 10 dollars per widget. At 300. The derivative value was 38. You can verify that by plugging 300 in for x in c prime. And then at 400, the value came up to be 78. Now remember, these values are measured in dollars per widget. In fact, what we've done is approximate the 201st, 301st, and 401st, the cost to produce each of those widgets. Let me restate that just to be specific. When you do C prime of 200, that estimates the, 200, the cost for the 201st widget. So the 201st widget will cost approximately $10. In the same way, the 301st widget will cost approximately $38, and the 401st widget will cost approximately $78 to produce. Now you may notice that these production costs are increasing. At 201, it costs ten dollars to make that guy. For 300, for the 301st, it costs 38. For the 401st, it costs 78 just to produce those items. 
So what might cause these costs to rise for a higher number of widgets produced? Well, uh, things like overtime, extra shipping costs. When you um, rent a truck for shipping, as soon as you fill that truck up, you need to rent a new truck. That next item uh, has a far uh, higher cost to your company than the one before it because you have to rent a new truck, things like that. There are other things that affect the cost as well. And so we're going to be exploring a lot of these issues. But in general, to sum up this first portion of the lecture, uh, let's now just remind ourselves that C prime of n, the derivative of the cost function, approximates the cost of producing the next item. We'll call that the n plus one item, not the nth. So when you plug 200 into the marginal cost function, you're approximating how much it would cost to produce the 201st item. When you plug a 7 into the marginal cost function, you're approximating the cost to produce the 8th item, the 8th widget. We'll discuss this more in the next video.